Hi, this is Bodies in Contention podcast. I'm Danny Warren. I'm Lexi. I'm Abby. I'm Bree. I'm Jackie. And I'm Megan. Today we'll be talking about women's clothing and consent. We wanted to discuss the whip crux dresses. The first one is the Deerjoy 2.0, which is a dress that dispenses drinks. There's also something called the smoke dress and the spider dress. All of these dresses took in consideration personal space and biological signals. Now Abby is going to discuss another type of dress. Another dress that was created by the Schweppes Soda Company was the Dress for Respect, popular in Brazil. And it was a dress that counted how many times women were touched in one night at a club. And it was meant to show the consensual touching of women at nightclubs. And now we're gonna pass it on to Bree to talk more about a survey that we sent out. Yeah, so we decided that going off of these things, we wanted to ask our peers how they felt about um, clothing and its utility, talking about how these dresses have a specific function. We wanted to hear what they thought about clothing's function for women in general. So some of the questions we asked them, we asked about um, how a woman's clothing influences how they're perceived by men. Um, Jackie, do you want to talk a little bit about the responses to how clothing's, uh, how clothing influences how women are perceived by men? Yeah, so one of the major questions we asked in our survey was about um, what people want in their clothing. Uh, and one of the bigger answers that people said, um, like what determines their factors in fashion was uh, the confidence that they can get through their clothing. Another big factor that people take into account with their clothing is um, comfort and practicality. Uh, security protection was also up there as one of their um, necessities for what they need in clothing. Um, and we kind of saw that in the uh, Schweppes soda commercial because it showed how much women were touched um, unconsensually uh, when they're at nightclubs. So that's a big factor that you know we see in clothing today and then also shown in that commercial. Yeah, I think that's definitely really important. A lot of our, like of all the people we asked about the clothing, what they thought was important to them, most people said the confidence factor, um, even with uh, the different options being protection, security, most people answered confidence and then things like protection and security. And I think that's really interesting because it talks about how that applies more to how women feel about their clothing versus how men use women's clothing, if that makes sense. Um, Lexi, do you want to talk a little bit more about some of the other questions that we asked? Yeah, so we asked a couple open-ended questions, so I'm just going to read a couple of the responses. So the first one was, why can clothing be problematic for women? And a good answer that we received were, was that all clothes are sized differently and are often used to describe someone's worth um, or women base their self-worth over the size and fit of certain clothes. And we often forget that clothes are meant to fit us, that we aren't meant to fit into our clothes. And I thought that that was a really powerful statement because I feel like a lot of times we beat ourselves up about not fitting into our jeans or things like not fitting right on our bodies, but there should be different sizes that should accommodate everyone's bodies. Yeah, I definitely agree. And we see that also with the response that we got where most people said that the most important factor was confidence. So if a garment does fit better, and a woman does feel more confident, then like that's the most important thing. So I really like that response too. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, we had some other really good responses to those open-ended questions. Lex, do you wanna read another one? Um, yeah, so the second question that we asked that was open-ended was how is clothing useful to women? And Someone said, clothing is a tool, clothes designed by women for women, often increase the comfort of previously uncomfortable garments. Um, by choosing what you wear, you have a modicum of control over uh, how others perceive you. And the issue 
that is the preconceived notions of what you wear are already out there and we have no control over them. So despite being able to control what you wear, you're also subject to everyone else's perception. Um, that was a little lengthy, but I think it um, gave a really good overview about um, how clothing, clothing is meant to make us feel safe and comfortable and confident. And we shouldn't feel that we need to change ourselves to fit into clothes, but that clothing companies should accommodate us. Um, Bree, do you wanna read another question? Yeah, I think what Lexi said is really important. Um, a lot of these questions were based around how um, our survey people felt about the clothing. Um, some of, so we asked, um, how influenced are you by others when choosing an outfit? And most of the options went from one, not at all, to five, a lot of influence. And most people over half chose either five or four on their influence. So um, Jackie, do you wanna talk a little bit about what that could mean? Yeah, absolutely. I was actually thinking about um, something that uh, Lexi said about how um, a lot of the times clothing isn't curated for all body types. I know it's kind of going off on a tangent somewhere else, but one of the responses we got in the survey was talking about how it's problematic that a lot of the trendier clothings or clothing and um, trendy styles aren't made to accommodate all body sizes, like more trendy um, fashion forward styles are made for one particular type of um, body, like a more slender or athletic body. And um, the question that we asked people um, for the response that we got to like what I'm talking about is um, why can clothing be problematic for women? And although the Schweppes commercial talked about how it's problematic for women to be um, perceived a certain way by men, um, but in this interpretation, it was it's problematic because uh, the clothing that's more fashionable, but that a lot of people want to wear isn't always uh, curated for all body types. And that's really problematic when a lot of people are different sizes and not just, you know, Brandy Melville, all size fits one. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And along with like um, influence and how you're influenced by others, like just what, how you dress, what it gives off like how people interpret and what you're wearing and what it implies. We got one response to the question about why clothing can be problematic that discussed that if you don't dress professionally, you can't work in a professional environment, but professional clothes are, you're not, not everyone is able to access them because of their cost. Um, but also in college, like frat parties are based off of girls coming and wearing low cut shirts and trying to um, and like dressing provocatively because that's the only way you deserve attention. I thought that response was interesting because it just shows that the way you dress and the way you think people are going to perceive you um, is really important in what you want to show people about yourself. Like if you want to show that you are more professional, that means you have to make sure your clothes match that. Um, going off of what Abby was saying about like frat parties, like I know at least here, like in College Park, like if you walk on like Baltimore Avenue on like Saturday night, every single girl is wearing the exact same thing. There's no difference between anyone. Like everyone is wearing jeans and a black top. And I think that other what other women are wearing really does have an influence on what you wear like you want to fit in and you don't want to stand out being someone wearing something completely different so yeah going off of that um a lot of people in the response um said they wear clothes for comfort and um confidence and a lot of stuff like that but I feel like we didn't account for social pressures like what other people are wearing um what we feel like we need to wear based off of what we see on social media and aspects like that. I think the confidence question is a really interesting one and the fact that so many people answer that because what makes us confident is both internal and external. Like we dress, we are, we feel confident when we wear clothes that other people like approve of, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. It was interesting that 
confidence was the biggest thing that people said they look for in clothing. But then uh, when we asked what, like what makes people choose certain clothing, they said it was for self-expression. But then um, like Daniela said, there's a lot of um, similarities. When you walk down College Ave or Route 1, everybody's kind of wearing the same thing. So if it's about self-expression, are you confident that you look like everybody else and nobody's going to judge you for what you're wearing? Which that, that's, I guess, my take on it. Yeah, going off the Route 1 thing and College Ave thing, um, another question on the survey talked about how often you see women sexualized by the clothing they wear. And the overwhelming majority of the responses said that either very often or sometimes often women are sexualized by the clothing they wear. And I feel like um, Route 1 and College Ave is a good example of this because on Friday and Saturday nights when people are going out, they're all wearing the same thing and they're all sexualized. And I can't even tell you the amount of times that I've been catcalled, like just walking down that road, like not even going to the bar, just like catcalled because it's what, what I'm wearing. And not even like when people are going out, I feel like when, even when women wear like leggings to the gym, they're sexualized, which is not even like a time where they like want to be seen in a sexual context. And it's, it's very interesting. I definitely agree with that, especially going back to one of the examples of the dresses that we were looking at, like the Schweppes dress. Um, if we look at it, it was more covered up. It wasn't like it was very exposing. It was a dress and it was kind of like a normal looking dress, nothing too special. And it still got a lot of responses from the men and people were still touching. And um, I think it just shows like it doesn't like, even if you're wearing like the same dress or not exposing too much, there's still like an issue with like consent with clothing, clothing, like, especially like catcalling, like there's no boundary almost. And I think that just shows us like clothing is definitely like influential and it kind of just that dress specifically by like showing us how and counting how many times women were touched just shows how much it kind of like shows us that there needs to be a change, not just in, um, clothing and like what clothing does for us but like overall like how we treat women and how we perceive women and treat them yeah going off of that you would think that with the Schweppes commercial you wouldn't have to make the argument that your clothing determines how other people treat you and whether there are unwanted advances or not but it's it's crazy that we have to make that comp or like make that debate like you know you see this woman who is not wearing something incredibly revealing she is still getting you know touched without her consent this amount of times per night like this is how prevalent it is and like even making that argument like you saw in the commercial there were guys saying oh well like if a woman is here on a Thursday night then of course she wants to do things other than just dance when that's obviously like not true. And it's like, you have to go about changing the culture. And I know this conversation is about the clothing and what clothing can do for us, but I feel like seeing that clothing isn't the determinant for whether you're getting these unwanted advances or not, because of that, we have to go about changing culture and changing the way that people like treat women, like you said. Um, going off of what Abby was saying about how the Schweppes dress was so like simple, I think it would actually, be interesting to see like if you were to put the Schweppes dress in a room with the Weeprex dresses and because obviously those dresses were more sexual they were more revealing and but those dresses didn't give the hosts like any opportunity to be to even give someone consent so I think it would be interesting to see like if you were to put them both in a room together if men would go more towards the dresses that were let's say more sexual and more revealing than the ones that were plain. And like, before we wrap up, I just have like a question for you guys, like what you think. So in the dresses by Whiprecht, we see they're very complicated, obviously very technological and, you know, very out there. They're not super practical and they're more preventative. But on the other hand, the dress for a sec, by Schweppes is more um, like it counts more and it does cover, it's more practical and simple. 
but it, it it does like try to invoke more social change so what do you guys think for women's fashion and feminist fashion like which one do you think is more important and which way do you think we should or fashion companies should lean more towards I mean I definitely think that it's a double-edged sword because while I support these like dresses like what we're talking about they shouldn't be necessary like there shouldn't this shouldn't be a question if that makes sense like we shouldn't need to feel like we have to choose between being safe and looking good yeah I agree so with the dresses that were like had the spider legs and the smoke I feel like those kind of they kind of made it like the woman's burden to like um like keep people away where if women aren't the problem then why should we be the ones that have to fix it but with the dress where it shows where like women were touched it kind of puts the blame on men and um it makes it so that the men are the ones that have to change and not the women yeah I feel like the dresses that had um a lot of like technology involved in them didn't really make a statement about anything other than a lot of time was wasted because it, it's really just putting a lot of um pressure I think on the woman to like convey that she doesn't want to be talked to that she doesn't want to be touched like especially the spider um arm dress people shouldn't come near her I mean are women not able to communicate that they don't want advances like if someone does something that makes them uncomfortable the them just saying and vocalizing their feelings should be enough they shouldn't have to wear like a two thousand dollar dress that will poke them in the eye if they get too close you know so I think feminist fashion um doesn't have to be incredibly you know technological like that like the dresses we saw in class it can literally just be more inclusion with sizes so I agree that with Abigail's question um that like we should move towards feminist fashion, but in a way that, you know, there's more like size inclusion and comfort. Thank you for listening. We'll be releasing the second episode of our podcast next Monday. We plan to talk about Bordeaux's thesis on the docile body and societal expectations for women.